Welcome. In this video, we introduce WinClone 4. We'll walk through creating and restoring a WinClone image, and we'll also take a brief look at the advanced features of WinClone Pro. First, a bit of background. Several years ago, Apple changed their personal computer hardware from PowerPC to Intel processors, making it possible to run Microsoft Windows operating systems directly on the Mac. Apple provides Boot Camp Assistant, a utility to divide storage space into partitions for OS X and Windows, as well as required device drivers. Installing Windows is just the beginning. Next, you must download Windows updates, install and authorize programs, create user accounts, enter wireless network passwords, set up printers and scanners, enable file sharing, migrate data from the old computer, install antivirus, and install bootcamp drivers. Getting a fully functional Windows system up and running takes a lot of time and effort. Once you have Windows configured just how you want it, WinClone ensures that you don't need to do it again, no matter what happens. Let's take a look at how it works. WinClone creates an exact clone of Bootcamp in the form of an image file. If disaster should strike in the form of a virus or failed hard drive, simply wipe out the Bootcamp partition and recreate it. WinClone will restore the clone file back to Bootcamp's original state and you're up and running in no time at all. And if you're upgrading to a new Mac, Use WinClone to restore a clone of your old Mac's bootcamp to the new Mac. Check out the migration tutorial on the WinClone support page at twocanoes.com. WinClone 4 requires OS 10, 10.7 Lion, 10.8 Mountain Lion, or 10.9 Mavericks, and Windows 7, 8, or 8.1. A bootcamp partition is also required. WinClone 3 is available if you're running Snow Leopard or Windows XP. Now let's create a WinClone image. We'll open the WinClone app, and the first thing we see is that our bootcamp partition is displayed as an available volume in the Sources column on the left. Since we've just installed WinClone, we'll need to authorize using the license key, a one-time operation. Click WinClone in the Finder menu and select Preferences. In this example, WinClone is already authorized, but we'll reauthorize for demonstration purposes. Click the Select button and navigate to the location of the license key file, select it, and click Open. Our copy of WinClone is now authorized. Click OK to close the dialog box and close the Preferences window. We'll come back and take a closer look at the other settings in the Preferences panel shortly. The Bootcamp partition here is in the Sources column, and it corresponds to the Bootcamp partition here on the desktop. When we select the Bootcamp partition, the Destination window changes to the Available option which is to save to a WinClone image. Detailed information about what options are available, depending on the selected source, are provided under the destination window. We'll select the Save Image, and the Save Image button at the bottom becomes active. Before we save the image, we'll use WinClone to shrink the Windows file system, so the resulting image can be restored to a smaller bootcamp partition if necessary. This step is optional, but if there's a chance that you'll restore the image to a smaller bootcamp partition, you'll want to first shrink the file system. Click the gear icon in the lower left corner and select Shrink Windows NTFS File System. Authenticate with your credentials and click OK. A dialog box will confirm, click OK. The file system is being shrunk down now. Let's slide the sources column over to get a better look at the bootcamp information. Later, we'll expand the file system back to the original size using the Expand Windows File System option. Let's see what changed in Bootcamp after shrinking the file system. The partition size is still 34.91 gigs, but the file system is only 13.03 gigs. WinClone excluded the free space to reduce the file system by over 20 gigs. We'll click the Save Image, and then click the Save Image button at the bottom. This dialog alerts us to make sure that Windows has been checked for block errors before imaging, which is an important step. Block errors account for most cloning problems and is easily fixed by using a built-in Windows utility called CheckDisk. Click the More Information button, which opens a help document at twocanoes.com that provides step-by-step -step instructions for running CheckDisk in Windows. It's a good maintenance practice to run CheckDisk on a regular basis. 
So now we're ready. We've selected Save Image as the destination, and we'll click Save Image. And we'll save it to the desktop for this demo. And we'll give it a descriptive name, Win7 Shrunk Boot Camp. And click Save. You'll notice that the bootcamp partition disappears from the desktop. WinClone unmounts bootcamp to have full access to copy the contents. The progress bar gives us the status of the imaging process. Incidentally, this video uses time lapse, so the actual time required to create the image will be longer than what you're seeing here. You'll notice that the new image file now appears on the desktop as well as in the WinClone sources column. Later, when we walk through the Bootcamp restore process, we'll use the WinClone image as our source for the restore. Imaging is completed as confirmed in the dialog box, and Bootcamp has been remounted to the desktop. And we'll click OK, and we have our new WinClone image on the desktop. We now have our Bootcamp partition and an exact clone or snapshot of Bootcamp in the form of a WinClone image. If the hard drive should fail, or Windows is infected with a virus, Restoring this image will put Windows right back to the same state it was in when the image was created. When we select the WinClone image, the destination window changes to show Bootcamp as the destination. Notice that our image appears in the Sources column and has a size of 13.03 gigs, which matches the file system size of the Bootcamp partition. By shrinking the file system before imaging, we are now able to restore Windows to a Bootcamp partition that is much smaller than the original. And we don't want to forget to go back and select Expand Windows NTFS File System after creating the image. Expanding is necessary if you plan to continue using the current bootcamp volume. Expanding will restore the file system to utilize all available space on the volume again. Once expanded, the file system size and partition size are the same, 34.91 gigs. So let's look at the options in WinClone Preferences. Click WinClone in the Finder menu and select Preferences. The first option is Verbose Logging. Turn this on when troubleshooting problems. Check for new versions at startup. When imaging, remove page file and hibernate file. When this is set to always, it saves space by deleting Windows cache files. Set it to never to keep the cache files. Leave always for updating the BCD. Share WinClone images on network. This option provides a way to migrate Bootcamp over the network to another Mac running WinClone. Keep this turned off unless you're sharing your Bootcamp or WinClone images with a destination Mac on the network. So now we're ready to restore a WinClone image back to Bootcamp on a fresh Mac. We have our WinClone image on the desktop ready to go. So let's open WinClone to see what we've got. To use this WinClone image, we'll drag it over to the Sources column in WinClone. This image is 8.83 gigs in size. We're not quite ready to restore yet because we haven't created the bootcamp partition, but we know that it needs to be around 9 gigs or larger for this image. We'll use Disk Utility, located in the Utilities folder, to create the bootcamp partition. In Disk Utility, we see the Mac volume is contained here in the internal hard drive, which in our example is a 251 gig SSD. Select the hard drive and then click the Partition tab. Here we see a single Mac partition that uses all of the available space on the hard drive. Click the plus sign at the bottom to add a new partition. We can adjust the partition sizes by grabbing the divider and dragging it up or down. Click inside the new partition to select it and the size will display under Partition Information on the right. We'll just drag this down until the new partition is about 30 gigs. We'll name it Bootcamp. The format should be set to MS-DOS FAT for now, but you could use EXFAT if you choose. We can't create an NTFS volume because Disk Utility doesn't support creating NTFS volumes, but it really doesn't matter because when we restore this image with WinClone, it's going to overwrite it with NTFS of the original image. If your Mac uses a Fusion Drive or a 3 terabyte hard drive, 
do not use disk utility to create the bootcamp partition. You have to use bootcamp assistant for that process. After clicking apply and partition, disk utility begins creating the bootcamp partition. Our new partition has been created and mounted on the desktop. Quit disk utility and we're ready to restore our image. So now let's go back to WinClone. Our new bootcamp partition is now available in the destinations window and the WinClone image is already present in the sources column. So we're ready to restore. First, select your WinClone image under the sources column. Then select the bootcamp partition under destinations. Click restore to volume and click restore. Another method to view progress details is to select the window from the finder to open and view the console log. Type WinClone in the filter field at the top to display only WinClone console events. Our time lapse is in effect again, so actual restore time will be longer. Now the restore is complete and we have a bootable Windows partition identical in every way to the original. If this were a real PC, it would not be the simple process we've just demonstrated in cloning Windows to a file and then putting it back on a new bootcamp partition. That is the power and flexibility of WinClone. We invite you to learn more at the Two Canoes website. Point your browser to twocanoes.com slash winclone to reach the product page, and then click Get Help for support resources that include bi-monthly free webinars, an active support forum, and a wide array of tutorials on migrating bootcamp, migrating from a PC to bootcamp, shrinking the Windows file system, and using WinClone Pro in an enterprise environment. Our tutorial videos get into the nuts and bolts of specific WinClone features. If you're new to WinClone or you need a specific solution, the FAQ has answers to the most common questions for using WinClone. Or you can send us an email, support at twocanoes.com, and we'll promptly get you the help you need. Now that we've covered the basics of using WinClone, we'd like to share an exciting new feature in WinClone Pro, the package installer. You can now turn any WinClone image into a standard package for deployment with your favorite client management consoles. Add the image to sources and the make package option becomes available. This is the same package format used for mass deploying apps to labs, classrooms, and other Mac enterprise environments. Select make package and configure installation options from the drop down window. The package ID and version helps keep track of your created package versions. Choose to create a bootcamp partition during installation as a proportional value based on the size of the hard drive on the destination Macs. Or create the partition as a predetermined size for all destination Macs in megabytes, gigabytes, or terabytes at the exact size that you choose. For Macs with existing bootcamp partitions, Select the partition number to which the image will be restored. Click Create Package. Select a save location and a name for the package. Click Save. Our time lapse shows faster than actual package creation time. The package just created now contains the WinClone image and instructions for creating a bootcamp partition and is ready for deployment. Thank you for joining us in this overview of WinClone 4. If you already run bootcamp or are thinking of running bootcamp in your Mac, we hope you'll find WinClone an essential part of your dual boot setup.